What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's happening to the economic calendar thus far with the news saying about Tesla. What are the very important levels to be watching for on Tesla, Spy, and all these other tickers? But before I bring you the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to 5 free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with the market. So, I just want to mention right now that Tesla's looking very weak compared to SPY, compared to the QQQ, NVIDIA, and Apple. Tesla's looking very weak right now. It's continuing to sell off, and that's because we got some very bad news once again. I gave you guys a warning about this in the morning, about our key levels, and Tesla's broken the lows from Friday and still on a downtrend. So you want to be very careful with it. I'm going to break down what's happening to Tesla and the levels and all these tickers in just a few minutes. Let's first go over some data. So all of the data was very close to expectations. Nothing was that crazy, and the market is just shopping right now as nothing was too insane. It's very, very minor data for today. And the same thing for tomorrow. There's nothing too serious that's coming out. However, I just want to mention that what's going to become more serious is going to be the earnings that's going to affect the market more. Today, after the market closes, we have United Airlines, Logitech, and just a couple of others. For tomorrow, we have Netflix and a few others, not to mention Tesla and IBM on Wednesday. Now, usually and historically, when Tesla, <laughs> excuse me, when Tesla approaches its earnings, right, when we get closer and closer to earnings, Tesla tends to run. We tend to see this thing uptrend approaching its earnings. But this time around, Tesla has not been able to do that so far. And that's because of so much bad news that's continuing to come out. I'm going to break down what that news is. So because of all this bad news, it's making it very, very, very difficult for Tesla to hold up, to even run. It's just causing more selling pressure for Tesla, given the current macroeconomic environment and all the bad things coming out. So what's the bad news? As I went over it in the morning, I mentioned to you all that the one of the biggest Tesla bulls has cut their price target on Tesla. This is Morgan Stanley's analyst known as Adam Jonas. He basically mentioned that he cut his Tesla price target to 345 from 380. I went into more details about his assessment in my early morning video. But unfortunately, this is very negative for Tesla. On top of this, Panasonic has come out, which is one of the biggest makers of batteries for Tesla. It's actually delaying its plan to build its third uh, battery factory in North America, according to Reuters. This is very negative. This is what the CEO mentioned as they're once again focused on other ventures. They are going to be looking at a third location in North America, but they're delaying the plans for the time being. This is very negative. This is once again going to be a little negative for Tesla as well. Uh, Panasonic is, I believe, one of the largest uh, bad, battery manufacturers in the entire world. And it's very important because this their partnership with Tesla is crucial for their development and their supply chains. Now, other analysts like Adam Jonas were saying that Tesla has oversupply right now. Demand is slowing down because of the recession, because of the effects of the rate hikes and the expenditures that are added because of high interest rates. As EV demand is dropping alongside demand for other commodities, it's very negative for Tesla. There's also news about Tesla potentially shutting down some manufacturing because of what's happening with you know, things over the Red Sea and such. So it's very, very negative for Tesla. All these things have been coming out. There are more analysts coming out, more headlines coming out saying that Morgan Stanley warns EV momentum is stalling and lists seven reasons for Tesla owners to be worried, Tesla investors to be worried. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things coming out like this from price cuts to, uh, you know, the waning EV incentives, which is a little bit uh, negative for them. They're kind of dwindling depending on, uh, you know, how people qualify and factors like that. But that is technically true, unfortunately. There are other things going on amongst them political risks you can also argue that just a bunch of things going on but you know we're getting all these negative headlines it's still affecting tesla it's really trumping our indicators from yesterday so it is what it is guys let's just now talk about the charts and how things are looking so when it comes to tesla tesla attempted to bounce here we actually got a small bounce we came very close to this 217.5 area uh, this is one of the resistance we mentioned, resistance levels we mentioned, but we failed to get up to 220. We actually failed to do so. It attempted, it was trying, and ended up failing because you know it, it wasn't really enough. So when Tesla pushed up in the morning, this was just another liquidity grab. We we're grabbing liquidity, trying to break the pre-market highs as people started to buy up here, going long, thinking 220 was coming. They just triggered stops and they started to just smack it right back down. So this pump was in preparation of some downside. I told everyone that Tesla had potential to bounce. 
It did attempt to bounce, but ended up failing because of all this bad news. I told you I would also turn bearish on Tesla if we ended up losing a lot of these lows right here. If we broke below like 210, for instance, and eventually 208. And as that's happened, Tesla's continuing to sink. It's looking very weak. Now, Tesla's starting to chop around the 207s. It's very choppy right now. But the next critical support historically is closer to 205. And below that area, below that, we have 202 coming, followed by 200. So it once again, very, very weak looking, not the best as Tesla's looking relatively weak. And we're going to be watching our levels. For resistance, we have this basically close to 208. Then we have 210 and 212 as a critical resistance to be watching for. It's a very important level for Tesla. If it breaks above this, you know, you're going to be watching the 214s and 216 range. But it's looking pretty weak for now. So we're not really... Uh, at those levels yet and relative to the market it's just not looking the best one thing that does concern me about tesla is that the four hour time frame is closing in on a potential bearish crossover on the ppo and it's continuing to make lower highs and lower lows it's been down trending over and over and over again there's no sign of this thing truly bouncing yet it's very unfortunate for now so you want to be watching it carefully you want to be seeing how this holds up relative to the market this is very, very important. And, you know, if the market does start to sink soon, that's going to be negative for Tesla as well. So this is favoring the bears, guys. Please be very careful, at least for now. Please know that fundamentally, I'm a very big Tesla bull. But for the short term, although Tesla is looking bearish, I'm not truly a big bear or big bull. I have to wait for earnings to come out on Wednesday before I determine which way I think it's going to go. But for now, Tesla is looking weak. So we're just going to be looking at the chart like this. And we'll see what happens after its earnings on Wednesday. Uh, for spy this is looking a little bit weaker as well because i mentioned to everyone we had this resistance coming at 485 notice how we tried to break that we failed to break that and we got this rejection right there so it's basically really tight it's very tight just chopping back and forth and back and forth between these levels i never touched these levels because i left them exactly as they were in the morning this is exactly where spy is holding up so watch resistance we have minor resistance around the 484 area it's actually a little bit lower than that uh, here's like a nice hint, guys. If you go on SPY and look at the five minute time frame, your EMAs are very, very nice supply and demand zones. So, right here, we have resistance at 483.68 to 484. That's where this yellow line happens to be. Then we, al we also have support to 200 EMA. Uh, we're just kind of stuck between these levels, shopping around, not really doing a whole lot. So, it's very boring. It's very, very boring. Very, very uh, lame, if anything, lame price action. So, that's all we're seeing right now. If you want to turn bearish on this thing, you want to see this thing lose 482, and we're going to see this, this test 481.36. That's very minor support. We basically would be approaching 480, in my opinion, if we lose 482, because we have this imbalance over here, and this is going to be dragging this thing down. And then on top of that, if we lose 480, that's going to be a big test for more downside. For now, we haven't done that, but this is looking a little bit more bearish, and this is looking a little bearish. It's favoring the bear slightly more, but it's chopping for now. So it's chopping for now. The trend is starting to shift in favor of bears because we broke, we failed to break this high and we're kind of like coming downwards after this big bar down. So although this favors the bears slightly more, right now we're just chopping around back and forth and back and forth, but there's a risk of downside in the future. There's a slight risk of this cooling off a bit more unless we could try to get back above 485. All right, so that's what I'm seeing. It's very choppy. This favors some more downside potentially for you know the next uh you know day or so it's very possible and the chart is favoring the bears slightly more but right now it's just chopping around so we're not truly seeing the bearish move yet so be very very careful on the qqq it's the same thing this actually looks more bearish than spy this got this big rejection i was saying in the morning we might fill this gap and that's what happened we're barely holding 421 the 421s if we lose that our next target is 420 right we have to hold 420 or else this thing is going to be sinking down to 418 and you know much lower levels below that like 416.5 415 and beyond but in my opinion this chart is favoring the bears a bit more if you want to be bullish you want to see this thing make higher highs and higher lows break 422.5 then 424 but we're not really doing that and the qqq is continuing to downtrend so we could see even more downside unfortunately looking at the qqq especially on the four hour time frame, uh, this is starting to contract a little bit and it might be making its way back down to the 20 EMA. So it's favoring the bears a little bit more on the QQQ. On, let's see what else there is. There's Apple. Apple is actually at a very critical level. So Apple, this trend is still relatively strong as it's uptrending, but there's an issue with Apple. Here's what the issue is for the bulls. So if you look at Apple, the thing about Apple is we're at a historical tight resistance. 
right here. So see how we have this giant W, right? We completed the full measured move. We made we made the full measured move, right? And this is why I was saying there might be more upside coming to the markets. This did help SPY go higher. SPY is still above where it was on Friday. Same thing with the QQQ. At least it, it was temporarily before coming back down. So I was right about the market going higher thanks to Apple, at least playing a large role. But here's the problem. The problem is look at the high we're at. See this high right here? This high is the same as this high right here, right? And that tells us that we're at resistance right now at this 195 area. Because the last time we went there in the very beginning of January, uh, Apple was at between 194.4 to 195. You could, you could see when it was in the 195s, it rejected. We got these big rejections off of this area. Also, we reject off 197. That's another rejection area worth noting. But at 197, also 195, we got big rejections historically. So we're, you know, we, we tested 195, we rejected so far, and now we're kind of struggling to break this area. So although Apple is trying to push up, we're at tight resistance. We're at a big resistance on Apple. So we'll have to see if this could break or not. To be bullish, you have to break 195. If you fail to break it, watch 193.5. If you lose that, a bigger drop is coming. It's really that simple. In my opinion, be very careful. Watch this resistance. So far, it's rejecting. So there is a risk of some downside. On NVIDIA, on NVIDIA, this is just very tight. Now, I mentioned the morning NVIDIA is a little bit stronger than the market than the QQQ, but it's starting to chop around a lot. So basically, this thing rejected, came all the way down to one, uh, not one, 595, and then it came down to about 590 from there before coming back, down, back up. And I was kind of just stuck. It's just stuck right now, chopping around. If we're bullish, you want to see this thing break and hold 600, watch 602 above that, then 605. We're very close to that 605 area. For support, you're going to be watching uh, basically very close to around 595. And if we end up losing that, if we close below that, that's going to favor the bears a bit. All right. As, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about today. It could be like tomorrow and the day after. But right now, what is the chart doing? It's very simple. It's just chopping back and forth, back and forth. It's been stuck between... 597 to 600 for the past three hours, not really doing much. It's very stuck right now. So it might just remain st stuck for the rest of the day. But just know for the future, for the next few days, next, maybe even during the after hours, watch these levels just to be safe. As of right now, NVIDIA is stuck. So we'll have to see where it breaks for now. But that's all I really have for the video. So thank you all so much for listening. I'm sorry about Tesla, guys. Historically, Tesla does tend to run approaching earnings, but this is a very different situation. Tesla was trying to bounce. It really wanted to, and it ended up just failing because of all this negative, negative news that keeps coming out. More bad news. Every single day, I have a new negative headline to be talking about. It's just madness. And it's going to continue like this. If it keeps continuing like this, going into earnings, we might not see much improvement in the share price for Tesla. All right. So it is what it is, guys. You know, I, there's not really a whole lot I could do about this, but all we can really do is just be reactive, be patient, and give Tesla some time. I'm not a mega bear on Tesla. I need to see what happens after earnings before I change my view. There's always a risk of downside for Tesla, especially given the current environment and what's happening with demand, but it's not the end of the world. The long term is still bright for the company, and I just see this as another buying opportunity. So that being said, thank you for listening. We'll see how our earnings goes in the next couple of days. Make sure you watch your levels again. Thank you. And peace out.